Is it finally turning to a buyer's market? Hey everybody, welcome to the Utah Mortgage Post. I'm here with my good friend and business partner, Eric Halliday. Hi everybody. And we're here to chat lay of the land. Is it finally turning to a buyer's market? We're going to talk about that today. But first, let's hit interest rates. What's going oh, on yeah. with interest rates, Eric? Well, everyone knows rates have gone up. It's probably the fastest people have seen rates go up in, I don't know, maybe ever in, yeah. in a short period of time. Our generation, for sure. Yeah, we're talking the last, what, six months, they've doubled pretty much. But I mean, really, when you think about where rates have been historically, they're still amazing. So we're talking right, somewhere yeah. around, in fact, we can give you some numbers. Yeah, we far, we're far under historical rates for oh, the last yeah. 40 years still. Yeah. Yeah, so some good numbers here. 30-year uh, fixed, 4.99 with a 5.142% APR. And that's on like a $650,000 loan, $647,000 loan. 20% down, I imagine. 20% down. That's a 30-year fixed loan. So, um, and then like a 15-year fixed, they're actually still amazingly low comparatively. 4.25 with a 4.498% APR. So... Rates are still around five or under five or close to four if it's a 15 year. So they're still, they're still great by historical standards. Yeah, for sure. In fact, you know, I remember, of course you remember this too. My first year in the business, Eric had been in the business for what, two years yeah, already? Yeah, a year and a half. So. Um, our sales manager, the very first company we worked for, I remember we were having a sales meeting and he came down the stairs because we were having a sales meeting in the basement. Um, which is probably a perfect place for sales meeting, as it turns out. But he had in his hand a paper, and he said, guess what, you guys? We can tell people that we can get six and a quarter. <laughs> get this out to everybody. Can you believe we can get six and a quarter interest rates? And we were just blown away. Oh, yeah. We never thought it would go lower than that. Yeah, no way. And then two, two years before that, or a year and a half before that, it almost touched 9%. That was, what, 2000? It almost touched nine percent. It like hit eight and three quarters, and then started its tumble back down when the dot com bubble burst. Yeah. So yeah, you compare it. We're half of that. Oh yeah, that's pretty fantastic. Much. So, so rates are still competitive, yeah. historically. But you know, it's it's what's on the shelf. You know, you basically yeah. you take what's on the shelf. But yeah. that's that's the lay of the land with interest rates. Um, they're predicting a little bit of volatility because of the volatility with inflation. So volatility means. They might bump around a little bit. You might go up, might go down. So what we're advising clients right now is to set up the loan how you like it with the rate that you like. And once you've got it set up with that structure that works for you, lock it. Yeah, Just for lock sure. your rate. Because if it goes down, if you're in the middle of a loan and the loan and the rates go down significantly, then we can always look at getting a better interest rate. But if you don't lock it and you're out floating, then and rates go up, then yeah. you're stuck. Nobody can do anything about it. Yeah. So yep. lock, lock, lock. Get it off the table. Get yep. it locked in. Okay. So Eric, are we turning into a buyer's market right now? What's going on? I think we are. I think we are. I, we've talked to a lot of realtors, and realtors are great because they they sort of they're talking to people. They're seeing what's out. They're putting in offers. They're seeing how long. Uh, their offers are, are ta or their, their, the listings they have, they're seeing how long it's taking for those to get under contract, what they're having to do. I mean, they really do have their finger on the pulse of the market. And I'm hearing pretty universally right now, and this is recent, this is within the last three, four weeks. In fact, one said today, last two weeks. So they're, they are seeing, they're feeling a change right now. And it seems like what are, what are some things that they're saying? Because I yeah. think you've talked to probably 30 real, real estate agents, what, in the last like two days? Yeah, 24 right. hours or so. And it, they're mm -hmm. seeing the um, builders. I've had one say that the builders, they've had some builders come to them and, and request buyers. <laughs> which when's the last time you heard a builder requesting more buyers? Not they're like, couple of years, please, yeah. we've got our sheet full and we've got the waiting list beyond full. So yeah, that was, I was really surprised to hear that. Um, they're, they're seeing inventories increase. They're seeing homes remain on the market a little longer. I think it's still strong. I mean, they're, they're st it's not a bad market. They're, they're saying that 
that there's still several offers. You get a good home and it gets a bunch of offers still. It's not like it's completely flipped. Yeah. But they're noticing the change and it's been so heavy on the other side from what they're saying that you know, the sellers have had kind of all the power basically over the last few years and everyone knows that. Boy, that's true. In fact, you know, I was just thinking last summer we had a real estate agent in our office talking to a client and they, and from a real estate agent, can you imagine this? He said, why would you ever buy a house right now unless you absolutely had to? Hmm. You know, to throw your hat in that ring, the stress of, you know, to, to compete with tons and tons yeah, of offers. Yeah, 40 offers and yeah. 100,000 over asking price. Yeah, and- he said, what a pain, what a pain. He said, I would just, I would just wait it out. So that's not the case right now. It's, yeah. It's kind of shifting over to, hey, it might be time to get your hat in the ring if you're interested in doing it. So I think so. And, yeah. they're, and they're, they're saying it's much less, I mean, maybe two or three offers. It depends on the home, of course, but, but I don't think there's, they're, they, they don't have a buyer and think, oh no, what am I going to, am I going to lose out on seven houses before I find one or 10 houses? They're, they're thinking we can find something here. A little more inventory. Yeah. That's nice. A little more inventory. Picking, yeah. Yeah. Picking up for sure. So I think that's a, and that's a recent development. That's going to be, let's see what happens going forward. But that's, that's like cutting edge information. That's just barely happening. Yeah. So, but, and we're in the summer buying season. So that's kind of nice to see. Yeah, too. that's true. So now I have, um, we have talked to some clients over the past wow, six months or so where they're saying, you know, I'm going to just wait for rates to go down and, you know, we're not going to tell anybody, you know, that that's a bad decision. Everybody's got to make their own decisions. Right. Of course. I mean, right. that's, that's totally understood. You got to do what's right for you. Yep. Go with your gut feel. But, yep. but one thing to consider is if everything else is in place, but you just don't like the interest rates, then it's still not a bad idea to, to jump in, pick up the house that you're looking at, get it set up the way you like it, the best you possibly can with what's available, again, with what's on the shelf, because there's, there's really two things that could happen down the road. Rates could go up a lot further, sure. as you've seen. I mean, sure. almost easy up to nine percent back, yeah. back then. Um, or and then you're then you're set if rates go up. Or yeah. what happens in a year if rates go down? Well, you can always look at the possibility of refinancing and essentially get your cake and eat it too. So when we set up loans for people, we always look at that um, with that angle in mind. Yeah, and if you if you hold off because you're hoping the rates will go down and then they go down. And what if that spurs more demand and home prices go up again yeah. a little bit? Well yeah. now, okay, you've gotten a lower rate, but but you've gotten a higher home price. Yeah, and you miss out on a bunch of equity. I don't know, I especially when it's your primary residence, I, I, I usually, I mean, it is their decision, just like you said. It's everyone's, they have to make their own decision. And we believe strongly in that, but there's it's usually there's usually a reason you're thinking i need to buy there's usually right. a reason for that and so you you go forward and, and usually you're thinking long term anyway especially with the primary residence so you're going to have this if you're thinking long term then it takes away a lot of the possible problems for a short term change in in rates or or property values yeah you're you're that, in for the long haul that's so. a that's a great thought and yeah. Uh, the thing about it is, too, is I think because of the nature of the fact that m- a lot of mortgages are 30 years or, you know, 15 years, we we sign our lives away, it feels like, you know, when you close on a mortgage. But then you think, well, gosh, I got to have this thing for 30 years. And that's, you can, all, you can, most people don't hold their loan for yeah, true. more than just a few years. Yeah. So. We always say, hey, let's look at what mortgage products are doing at the time because they're always changing. Yeah. They're always changing. And it's very likely that two, three years, maybe less, maybe more down the road, um, the mortgage situation in the marketplace or products that have come out, what may fit you better than what today's mortgage products fit you. So today's mortgage products may fit perfect for what you're looking to do now. Down the road, you might have something better that comes up. Right. Yeah. Now, one of the things I've noticed is people are with with prices going up a little bit. Over, <laughs> did I say a little bit? <laughs> prices going up a lot over the last few years. They're having a little bit more of a challenge coming up with the down, the percentage down payment. Mm, like yeah. they wanted to, 
maybe they wanted to do 20% down originally or even 5% down originally. And now that home, instead of being 300 to 600 and that 5% of 300 is, you know, whatever, 5, 10, 15, now it's 30,000. A lot more. Of, <laughs> right? Yeah. So there are a lot of programs still and uh, that can help with that down payment. So if, if let's say you're, Let's say they take our advice and they dive in and they take the rates as they are right now and the home prices as they are right now, and maybe they're still kind of struggling with that 20% down or 10% down that they wanted to have. The one thing we wanted to make sure everyone's aware of is there's still a lot of programs that can help with down payment. There's still zero down programs. There's still 3% down payment programs. Did I say down programs? There's still zero down payment programs, 3% down payment programs, 5% down payment programs. FHA is still around at the three and a half percent. So if you're a veteran, there's zero down there. So, and there's others. So there's still a lot of programs out there that can kind of help with that, keep that down payment minimal. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. Again, you follow what you want to do with your own life. And, and when clients come to us, that's the angle that we take. In fact, there's a client calling you right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's that's the angle that we take with, with all of our clients is what is, what are you wanting to do? What's your story? And then how can we set up the financing to fit what you are wanting to do the very, very best possible way? Such a great point. Yeah. Yeah. So lots of options out there, though. And um, uh, Okay. And anything else on the lay of the land that would be helpful to know this week? Um, I think that sums it up. I, 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 there's still a lot of opportunity. Yeah. It's, and there always is, right? Even after 2007, there was opportunity. Oh, yeah. Galore. Yeah. Actually, maybe in some ways more yes. for people. But so if you can pull together a little down payment for most people, if you can, um, if you have your inclination of, of buying a home, there's, there's opportunity out there. Right. And there's still great, great loan programs. Yeah. So we would say carry on, do yeah. it. Yeah, we've been through 20 years. Eric and I were talking, we've actually, Eric and I have been working together for 20 years. Oh yeah, it's our 20th anniversary. <laughs> you might say it's our, 20, <laughs> our 20th business anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've had a lot of fun in the last 20 years, but we've seen a lot of stuff. Yeah. So no market surprises us anymore. Actually, there is one market that does surprise us, and that is whatever the ubiquitous normal market is. <laughs> yeah. That surprises us, because there's no such thing as Right. Yeah. So, okay, so here's the thing. Um, if you are thinking about buying a house or if you're thinking about um, need getting a mortgage for anything that may help you accomplish your goals, what we want you to do is go to sweetmortgagedeals.com and uh, there's a number of ways you can get a hold of us there. You can book a call, you can apply online, you can, uh, we've got some forms there to tell us what your situation is. Um, you can download for free our new for 2022 pre-qualification checklist. That's a great little checklist. There's a few things on there that's gonna, that are, will, uh, you'll be familiar with, but there's a number of things that will surprise you um, that will help you put your strategy together for getting a home in 2022 or for making those changes that you want. So sweetmortgagedeals.com. And until then, see you later. Chat with you next week. Good, Thanks good so to talk much. to you.